where is it that you work that you probably shouldn't be going to a BDSM kink club? I work in a, real, a place of worship. I am of the opinion that you can have both mm -hmm. a relationship with God and enjoy kinky BDSM sex. I don't think those two things are mutually exclusive. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hey, how are you? I'm doing okay. I'm getting ready to go out right now. I'm doing my makeup, which is very exciting. Um, I can just get into it, I guess. Um, I'm going to a BDSM kink party tonight. It's anime themed. And I am going to get walked around on a leash. Oh, it's a Sunday night. So don't you just, do you guys not have work, <laughs> work tomorrow or you, what's? I do. I work at six in the morning tomorrow and I worked this morning. I worked at, I, yeah, I, I worked somewhere that I probably shouldn't be going to a BDSM kink club. So. <laughs> Wait, can I, it's, it, I, it's um, okay if you want to keep it under wraps, but what, where is it that you work where you add that you probably shouldn't be going to a. BDSM kink club. I, I work at a, real, a place of worship. You work at a church? So I, I work, um, yes, I do. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Now look, my, uh, I am of the opinion that you can have both mm -hmm. a relationship with God and enjoy kinky BDSM sex. I don't think those two things are mutually exclusive. <laughs> And that's my thoughts exactly. But I just think it's a little funny to be at church this morning at like 9 a.m. And then I'm getting ready. Like I, right now I'm wearing like a latex nurse outfit. And it's just like funny to go from my church clothes to that, you know? <laughs> now, like, um, is this something that you have always been been interested in? No. Um, so kind of. Actually, it's complicated because I was in a relationship for a really long time, so I didn't get to explore my sexuality. And then when I broke up with him, I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna try everything. And I went a little crazy, but we dialed it back in. And now we're going to like safe events and safe things. And we're doing that to just like explore. So I have not done this before, at least not to this capacity. And it is new for me. Now, when you say when you say you the way you said safe things, like were you going to <laughs> stuff that was unsafe, and if so, what what made it unsafe? Oh God. Okay. So, like last summer, um, I decided because we broke up um, two like uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna meet up with every dude on Tinder ever, <laughs> and I didn't actually like. It's complicated about that because I didn't wind up sleeping around as much as I wanted to, but I did try to go to a couple people's houses without telling anybody where I was going and without having talked to them for more than like an hour. Um, and there was this one guy that I tried to meet up with and I accidentally got super high and then I didn't go. And then he posted pictures of his gun on Snapchat like a week later. I was like, oh God, okay, he's been blocked. <laughs> there, there goes weed yeah, once unsafe. again to the rescue. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it saved my life a few times, but <laughs> Okay, so you uh so okay, so you broke up with this guy and you were like, I'm gonna just meet up with every dude from Tinder ever and that was your um version of a of a unsafe environment. Um and then yeah, now um I did Go ahead. Sorry. Um I actually I did wind up going to um this is a little bit more recently, but I went to some concert recently and I was going to go by myself if my friends didn't push me, but it was just at someone's house. Like, I didn't know where I was going. I didn't want to tell anybody where I was going. And I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to show up at this random person's house by myself and I'm just going to vibe. And to me, as like an ASAB person, that seems pretty unsafe. Um, so there were there were events that I went to where I should have been telling someone where I was going. Well, well, I mean, what is, it's, uh, I mean, when you say it was at a guy's house, like it was like a house show, like a, like one of those DIY punk shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really cool, okay. but I did yeah. get hurt in the mosh pit. <laughs> and if I had been alone, I could have gotten like seriously hurt. Um, so now, uh, how did you start getting into these, uh, these, these of more, I guess, official events? Um, so I have a friend who was working as a stripper for a little bit and he was like, oh, you should do this, that, and the other with me. And I was like, okay, fuck it. I might as well. And I, um, 
And I guess when he was a stripper, he wound up getting um, all his stripper friends were telling him like, oh, you know, um, there's these different events you can go to. And so he wound up following them on Instagram and he showed them to me. And then that's how I wound up getting involved. Mm. And um, how many how many of these events have you been to so far? Uh, oh, God, I've been to so many. I've been to mostly his shows. So I went to like, I want to say like seven or eight of his shows. And then I've been to two or three like kinky clubs um and they're all like different pop-ups so those are pretty cool but this is the first time i've been on the one this big which is really exciting and uh is this are these events uh, uh adding joy and value into your life i think they're adding human experience like it, it sounds kind of crazy like maybe there's joy maybe there's not i really don't know but I really love trying new things and, and going out and doing new things. Like today, I, I I just felt the breeze in my body and I was like, oh my God, it's like I'm a human. I get to, to experience human things. And this is part of that, you know? So I would say yes, but also not directly, you know? It is interesting because like, like sex is so else. like uh, fundamental to the human experience. It's like one of the most fundamental things to the human experience and yet consistently relegated to... A domain of shame. Exactly. And I think about that oh, probably a lot more than I should. Um, and so, like, like, when I first became single, I was like, I'm going to talk to every sex-positive friend that I know. And I'm just going to get, like, different perspectives. I was so scared to, like, I don't know, just, like, explore that side of myself and talk to people about it and be open, you know? What did you learn from talking to your friends? Oh, Mm, I, I think the biggest thing is that like everyone has a really different perspective on sex because like I, I've talked to a few of my friends that are like oh no you've got to save it for the right person whom you're in love with and then I have this other friend that I talked to who like he was like oh yeah I just have I, he, I think he's had sex with like 200 300 people something crazy like that and not to slut shame it's just not normal you know and he was like yeah sex is just a thing people do and it's fun and I was like you know what that's cool and so like I feel like I'm still trying to find my relationship with it yeah. And I think it's exciting to get different perspectives. Yeah, dude. You know, I um, I've been seeing a lot of this these like TikTok videos of of like people talking uh who are who are very like anti porn and anti sex work and OnlyFans and stuff and like mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't feel like there with all this stuff I don't feel like there is a right answer you know a right or wrong it's just like mm -hmm. we. We're lucky enough to live in a world where you get to make your own decisions and form your own opinions about it. And so for some people, they're like, you know, I've had sex with 300 people and whatever. It doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, and then for other people, they would be, mm -hmm. you know, horrified by that. And then for other people, it's like, you know, just one partner for my entire life. And uh, everyone hopefully gets to uh, do whatever they want without uh, infringing on other people's ability to do whatever they want as well. A hundred percent. And like, I think it's really exciting to get to explore those perspectives. Like, I don't think I could, see myself, I'm so sorry. Um, I don't think I could see myself like having 300 sexual partners. I think for me, it is still kind of an intimate and personal thing. And I think that's why it's exciting to get to go to shows like this, right? Where I can like kind of explore my sexuality and be a sexual person and, and express that to the people around me without feeling the need to sleep with a bunch of people and also to like i don't know just like get to again it's a self-expression part of it that i really want to get into the universe without sleeping around do you what's the what's the christian deal are you christian oh um so i was raised christian and then i dated this guy who was atheist for a long time and he was um really like one of those atheists that was like, everyone's atheist or you're stupid. And I was like, okay, this is weird. Um, anyways, he, he kind of made me move away from the faith. Um, and I wouldn't consider myself religious by any means now. I'm definitely agnostic. But I've been working on healing my relationship with Christianity, whether or not I decide to be Christian with this job. So no, I'm not religious, but... I have a large amount of respect for it. And this particular tr uh, place that I work is really, um, they do a lot of good things for the community and I appreciate that. What do you exactly do for them? Um, 
I do a lot of things for them. Um, I really don't want to dox myself right now, um, but I do a lot of their creative stuff, I should, I could say. What kind of creative stuff? Like if they like? need creative management, I, I do that. Okay. Are, are they like, do you like run their Instagram or something? What, what would, cre- I mean, you don't have to talk about whatever, anything you don't want to talk about, but what kind of creative things are they doing? Um, all sorts of things. Um, I help with presentations. I help with, um, I do help with social media. Um, I, I, that's most of what I do. Um, I do a lot of like graphic design for them and I really like doing that. Like I, I am so grateful to have this job because I, I work two jobs. I go to school full time and I like, I like this job a lot. <laughs> Would you ever hide a big penis in a folder somewhere and in, in, on, on a flyer, like somewhere like in the street? <laughs> not but where i would hide it is in my office somewhere i would hide it in my office for whoever comes next like you know what i might now that you said that <laughs> no 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 that's 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 not a good idea i mean it is in it's theory fun, though. I, well i i actually did something similar at my old food service jobs because i worked in food service for a long time i did that for like five five or six years um and when i did that and the it, couple of stores closed, not by any fault other than rent going up. Um, I hid like little drawings of things around the store for the new managers to find. And it would be like, I'd label them X out of six, and I would only put five drawings in the store. <laughs> have, you ever seen, three jobs. have you ever seen uh, this thing of, of how somebody hid a penis on the cover of the Little Mermaid VHS? No. Go, I've if never you're listening, heard of Google, it. Google it. Yeah, somebody hid a penis. Uh, they had to like recall. A, this I don't know if this is true. Or oh wait, 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 wait. It's a Photoshop thing. Actually, I have seen this. I have seen this. I saw it a long time ago when I was like, I think I was like 15 when I found this. That's why it, it like, didn't click. <laughs> now, um, what's your ultimate goal? What do you want to do with your life? Oh gosh, that's a great question because I've been trying to figure that out. Because at first I was like, you know, I want to get married and have a a good husband or wife. I don't know. And like, I want to be happy in that my love life. And then my love life fell apart. And I was like, shoot, well, now I really have to focus in on my art. And so I think my ultimate goal is just to, I don't keep trying new things and keep, whether that be like this type of thing or, or artistic things or, um, I also want to meet as many people as I can. I love talking to new people. Oh my gosh. Do you meet, uh, is there a strong community aspect to this uh, sex dungeon thing? Are you meeting a lot of friends there? Um, so I'm going with my friend who is no longer a stripper and then he invited one of his friends and I'm excited to meet her. And there's lots of people there from what I can tell, uh, the first general admission sold out, and then the VIP did not. So I almost had to get VIP. Really well, how much does it, how much does it cost but, to get in? Um, well, my ticket was a little over a hundred dollars. A hundred. And my outfit was about, yeah, my outfit was probably about oh god, like two hundred two fifty, and <laughs> and then you buy drinks, and so there's even more in the drinks aspect of it, you know. I gotta find my booty shorts. <laughs> that is a that's an expensive sex dungeon. Jeez, what is so? Is it just like? Is it just a show, or like you, people walk around and like fuck each other afterwards? Oh God, I wish. No, it's um, it's just a club. Like it's like a club environment, I think. And then they have they do have like a um, I as far as I can tell, they have a show, and it is someone getting tied up on stage, and it's actually really cool. I follow them on Instagram. They're super cool. They've gotten banned a couple times, and I followed their new account. Um. <laughs> And um, I, there's drinks and mingling, and I think there's a spanking floor. I don't know if I can get to the spanking floor. I did I did see, okay, actually, I did go to one of these events before, and I yeah. did see some guy, um, I don't want to yuck anybody's yum, and I totally respect what he's into, but he was getting kicked in the balls over and over again, and it was mildly amusing because I just wasn't expecting it, and that was the first one that I went to. <laughs> I, I, did you, I want you. To, I want you to know something. I want you to know something. You, I you saying you don't yuck this guy's young. You you prefacing you laughing at that guy who gets kicked in the balls for sexual pleasure. I want to give him. I want to give him some credit. 
because there, he knows that that's funny. How does he figure this out? That's what I want to know. Apparently, he's notorious in my local area. So I was talking to a friend about it. One of the friends, because I, I talked to a few friends about sex, and, and they had slept with like two, three hundred people. And I was like, "Hey, I went to this kinky club, and I saw this guy getting kicked in the balls. How funny! Like, <laughs> it was just weird." And my friend was like, "Oh, they pulled up a fucking picture of the guy on their phone and goes, yeah, I matched with him on Tinder. He's the only guy into that in this area.'" And I was like, "What the hell are you talking about?" Um, mm. Anyways, that was crazy. That was fun. You know, I always it's it's I've talked to people about this kind of stuff before. I'm not. I'm a pretty vanilla guy. I'm not a big like. Uh, uh, you know, beat the shit out of me or kick me in the balls or piss in my mouth or let me piss in yours kind of a guy. I wish I was, though, because I feel like, um, you know, my uh, uh, potential for sexual pleasure has a it, it really it's really got a ceiling on it, you know, whereas like guy getting kicked yeah. in the balls, he's like in the eighth dimension. I'll never experience what that's like. <laughs> I feel like I, I kind of agree, and I think that's also why I'm going to things, because, like, I I know I'm telling you that I'm going to this BDSM kink party and getting walked around on a leash, but I've never, I've actually never, ha like, had sex in a BDSM way. I've never, um, my ex, the ex that I was with for, like, God, almost a long, long-ass time, um, I, we never tried anything kinky. I think mean, the kinkiest thing we did was, like, public stuff, but it, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't say that on a podcast, but too late. <laughs> <laughs> so before we go, um, what's the like? Yeah. What are, is there? I mean, you don't have to you can get as specific or general as you want, but what's the thing you're most excited to do? It says here you're getting oh, walked God. around on a leash. Th that is absolutely what I'm the most excited about because I've wanted to try that type of thing before, and like the humiliation stuff. I think it is really, really fun, and it's super embarrassing, but also like. I don't know. I've always been kind of into it. And so I'm excited to have that opportunity, especially with a hot girl. Oh my God. I want to know. So I want to know something. Really from, I want to be. So, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Fish what you were going to say. Oh, I was going to say, I'm still only looking to make friends. <laughs> Even though I'm all, oh, she's so hot. She is. I'm just excited to have fun with the friends. So anyway, um, what, what do you want to know? If, if you went to the confessional and you told the priest, <laughs> I love getting walked on in the sex dungeon. I love getting shown around on a leash. I love this crazy BDSM sex stuff, but I don't know if it aligns with uh, uh, the religious institutions uh -huh. that I have aligned with. What do you think he would say? I'm just uh, knowing priests and knowing you and your yeah. life. What do you think he would say? So that's a great question because one time I went into his office and I saw a book about sex on the table. Um, it was something like priesthood and sex, everything you need to know. And I was like, I'm going to take a picture of that and get an idea of what he thinks about it so that I'm not just like, uh, I don't know, I, I, they're pretty accepting is the point. Um, and I think them being accepting means that they won't, I don't think that they'll have a problem with it. I really don't. I do think they might not want me representing them um, if I'm talking about it, but <laughs> that's a little bit different, you know? I'm not posting nude photos of myself online, so. All right, well, I, I'm definitely going to go to Kindle and search for priesthood and sex and read at least the first couple <laughs> pages of that book because it sounds very interesting. What did you Did you read any of it? No, I just took a picture of it. Um, this was relatively recently, so I didn't get a chance to. I'm I'm really busy, so it's like hard to do these things. Yes, it sounds like you have um, a a very very busy schedule. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, um, I am going to see you town. in LA. Oh, you're coming to see me in LA. I'm coming to see you in LA. I'm so excited about it. I'm leaving class early to some, come see you. you. It's not your fault. I just wanted to. I would do it anyways. But I'm very excited about it. Beautiful. Well, maybe thank I'm... thank you, man. Well, well oh, you were going to say maybe you um want to come talk about this on stage? Yeah, maybe. We'll see. We'll see for sure when it, when the time comes. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I feel like we've... I feel like... I've talked to somebody on stage once about this. I talked to a dominatrix in London. 
That was pretty interesting. They came on stage yeah. wearing uh, all this like spiky gear and stuff. I was afraid that they were going to poke my eye out with it, so I moved the chairs back a little bit. But uh, Amanda, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, spread love, not hate, and uh, do what's best for you. Beautiful. So thank you. Have a good night, guys. Thanks, Amanda. Have a good one. Yeah, I should have asked what the club was. You know, just for research purposes. Actually, I was in, um, I was in, uh, I did a show in Portland recently, and somebody came on stage and talked about, uh, uh, well, no, it wasn't in Portland, it was San Fran. Yeah, I was, I did a show in San Fran, and, uh, somebody came on stage and talked about, um, his experience going to one of those dungeons. I've never been. I kind of feel like it would be an interesting thing to 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 check out. And actually, I told I told him that on stage, and he was like, "You should come, you know, wearing the gecko suit." And I said, uh, "I feel like that would uh, draw the attention of a certain demographic, not necessarily, um, you know, a general one." All right. Next call. Howdy, howdy. Is hey, hey, Lyle? how's it going? Yes, sir. Is this uh, yeah. Pork? That's a great fake name. I love that. Pork, what's going on? You know, just uh, living the dream. Sometimes it's someone else's dream, but we're out here living. But yeah, but uh, how are you? It's so nice to hear your lovely voice. Uh, it's good to hear yours too, man. What does uh, Pork come from? Where does Where did you come up with that name? So my entire life I've been called pork chop by all my homies. I have friends whose parents don't even know my real name. They've known me for decades and it's just pork chop. So there's not really an origin story behind it. Just pork. <laughs> well, pork. Yeah. Um, it says here that you called in because you, uh, you say you. It says here you lost your girlfriend to due to drugs and prostitution, and you want to talk about that. I mean, yeah, you know, I don't really talk to many people about it because it's kind of obviously on the more embarrassing side. But I guess, I guess you could say my whole life I've had a bit of an issue with impulse control, whether that be like spending money like an ass. Um, just wanting to get things done as soon as possible, um, getting as high as I can, as quick as I can with no issues. Um, for a while there, I was using pharmaceuticals like a lot of people our age tend to do. And I had a, an amazing girlfriend who gave me everything I wanted was never hard on me about doing drugs and I think it got to the point to where I let I guess you could say sexual urges get the best of me and like I was saying with the impulse control around last year around Christmas time when I got my Christmas bonus from work I did a little bit of a quick provocative wrong thinking and I slept with a lady of the evening and to make it worse as the time went on within the coming months afterwards I did it again and you know I love my girl I know how you feel about people going through each other's phones I've never been one to hide things so I never really cared but I never deleted any of thing any proof of what I did and she found out and you know, I broke her trust and whatnot, but she stuck around for a little bit. And now it's to the point to where she's in my life, bare minimum, I guess more or less because she gets worried about me. But I think I'm just having a lot of troubles with dealing with being by myself again, like more than normal. And I can't, uh, can't really put my finger on it, if, like how to feel because there's a whole lot of guilt there's a lot of like obviously sad because we're not together but I think I'm angry at myself and obviously you can only go up if you're so down low but you get what I mean I hope um now okay so you didn't tell her you were going to see the the prostitutes it was a uh, it was a sneaky visit 
Of course. It was like, oh, I have the money. I'm on the internet. I used to work at a gas station out by the airport in St. Louis, and there's a lot of ladies of the evening that would be frequent there. So I've never in my life ever known where you go to look for that kind of thing other than just someone asking you on the street corner like in the movies. But I learned about this magical website where there it was a smorgasbord of very less than I'd call beautiful women offering themselves up. And it's always kind of been in the back of my head. I'm a lonely man. I've, you know, it's very rare that a woman comes around in my life that I really feel like is either worth the time or they're really about me. So, you know, never really thought about it. But then I guess I almost want to say it was cockiness. Like I have everything I want right now. I got money. I got my own place. I got a beautiful girl. Like what else would someone with not I'm not trying to say I'm made of money but what else mm -hmm. do I do with this extra money you know what I mean and I let my second head do the thinking you know what I mean so um how long ago was it that you uh your girlfriend found out about this this was like and this is gonna make me sound horrible I'm just saying it throwing it out there it was like directly after Christmas or like right before Christmas. So like uh, Christmas, 20, we didn't 22? go to. Yeah. 2022. Okay. Um, and when she found out did, when you, now the way you phrased it, where you were like, she's still around because she cares about you. Does that, are, you guys are not still to dating, are you? But you are in each other's. Lives. We, we, we were for a while there. And, you know, uh, there were, she told me when we kind of got back together that it's going to be hard for her. It's gonna, she's going to have nights where it's going to be something all she can think about. It's going to be nights where she's going to be able to brush it off. But it just kept feeling like, and this isn't something, I guess you could say maybe part of me would get annoyed with it. But not annoyed, but just like wish it would just stop. But there, the nights where she would be really thinking about it just kept going. Yeah. And it had never stopped. And it kind of got to the point to where she just, you know, even though everything was kind of going good for the last few weeks, she just kind of was like, I can't, like, I can't get it out of my head. I don't, I can't not, not, like, think about it. Now, the thing is, is even though she'll tell me that and she doesn't want nothing to do with me, we still have those moments where she's like, I miss you. I can't not be around you. So, like, we'll spend the night together and it's not purely like sexual based or anything it's just we do have love for each other in our heart and it's like we still enjoy the comfort um how long were you guys together for less than a year so that's something that i try to remind myself i guess whenever i get down about it but it was definitely less than a year like months not like even close to a year it's coming up on a year if we were still together. So are you, are you still uh, going out and how, how are you now with the drugs and the prostitutes uh, as of today? Uh, I'm not going to lie. When I get into bad head spaces, I do kind of self indulge. I definitely like, there was a point in my life where I would go out of my way to eat like fake Xanax. You know what I mean? Nowadays, I won't lie, I probably drink a little bit more than I ever have. Never been a drinker. I don't really, I'm not the kind of person to go looking for drugs because you can't trust drugs nowadays. But like, I don't know. I don't really like, I wouldn't say I'm actively looking for drugs to try to soothe this because it's not, I know it's not going to get me anywhere further. I just like, I, it's been one of those things where like I kind of look back and looked at everything that I just did and I've just been kind of grossed out by it. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. Like, I don't like yeah. who I am. I don't like what I became. Yeah. Um, I, like, the the impulsiveness. Like, can, can I ask how old you are? Yeah, I'm 26. Just turned 26. Okay, we're around the same age. Is, um, has the impulsiveness been a thing in your life for a while? My whole life. 
my whole life. I, and it went even to like, when I say in, like my whole life, I mean like small things. Like, this is going to sound spoiled, rotten little shit of me, but like my, I was an only child growing up. So like, you know, if I wanted this, I wanted that. I would throw a temper tantrum till my mom gave me a list of chores so I can get what I wanted. Um, if we're, like I'm driving the car somewhere to get somewhere it's not that i have road rage but like don't get me wrong i need to get the hell around this car to get where i'm going um when i only have like 200 bucks left in my account as long as my bills are paid i'm like screw it i'm gonna go buy the biggest bag of weed and then like you know and this is funny because i've heard about this on another stream i'll go do the the whole doordash instacart you know snagging some food low-key for free doing that whole scam from time to time and that's like how i eat you know what i mean like i'm kind of a dirt bag whenever you think of it in all, a lot of aspects i haven't really done as much growing up as i felt like i need to and now i'm at a point to where i feel like i need to start growing up being a grown man but i don't really like i have a good job i don't know where to go from here you know what i mean i'm kind all of right, feel like i'm at a, a stuck point Let's talk real quick. So, um, this whole thing happening with your girlfriend, and it's it's okay if 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 not. Like, did did it catalyze any desire or like actions towards any change for you? Any change? What? Um, like, did it did it? catalyze a stronger desire for you to like change your behavior or work on your impulsiveness yes at first when she called yeah. me the first time she found out the first time i definitely was feeling bad about it i'm like oh i need to stop being like this but after the second time there was an, a large amount of guilt that i felt even after i'm leaving the place that it happened I'm like thinking to myself, like, this is bad. This is gross. That wasn't worth the money I just spent on it. The woman wasn't even attractive. And then I sit back and I look at it and it's just a whole, yes, the answer is yes to your question, but it came after the fact. And it's like, I'm looking around at all the little things about my life that I'm doing wrong. And it's just kind of piling up now. So yes, it definitely had a hard negative effect on the way I think about the, my impulsiveness. Okay. So t today, let me, let me ask you this. Um, the road ahead for you, like, what do you, what do you desire? Like you're unhappy with who you are right now. What would a, a better version of you look like for you? I think and this sounds, and I hate saying that money is a, a make or break whether or not I'm happy, but like the way I spend money and my impulsiveness doesn't ever feel right in the moment. Um, I love smoking weed. I've been smoking weed since I was too young to be smoking weed. And I'm at the point to where I'm like, oh, I don't have weed and I'm not going to be feeling good. I want myself to be in a place where it's not that I necessarily you know, am like, oh, completely sober and, you know, I'm, you know, reading the Bible every day to get myself on track, but I just want to kind of appreciate myself more yeah. because when I get like this and I do things that are my own fault, it's like a whole lot of hating on myself yeah. and I can sit here all day long and tell you what it is that I'm hating about myself, but when it boils down to it, what am I going to do to change it? I, you, you know, this. while I can't give you go on have you have you I'm, I'm 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 down to talk to you more about this but ha, is this something you've talked to about a real uh is this something you've talked to a real therapist about yes yes okay, i'm what getting did, what into they, it I, I what did they tell you go on they're the 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 gentleman i'm speaking with is very old school to the book and he's just like oh you need to alienate yourself from your girlfriend and leave that about leave that be because that's the past you can't go past from that but he's also very like, oh, you need to go to bed on time. You need to try to set uh, more healthier schedules and routines for yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like the most cliche things you could hear. And it's not that I'm not saying that with 
on receptiveness mm-hmm. because like getting up in the morning, making sure my laundry is done, going to work on time every day has literally been the only thing keeping me going. So like, mm-hmm. yes, I can agree to it to an extent, but when it boils down to it, it's like, I don't really, I just feel like I'm kind of like everyone else and I'm kind of just like stuck in this 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 midway of my life and I don't know my next step. I don't feel that I have much talent mm-hmm. and I feel like the few things that I get going for me that are good or the one thing that I had going for me was this amazing girl that I could have okay. spent the rest of my life with. You know okay, what I mean? Let me, let me, let me, a few things. One, I laughed when you said that, um, your therapist was by the books and was telling you to, uh, go to sleep on time and do your laundry and stuff. I laughed because, uh, dude, I went to see a therapist, talked to them about a whole bunch of stuff. And he fucking told me the exact same stuff he was like i swear to god the same thing happened to me dude he was like he was like you gotta go to sleep he was like he was like are you eating healthy i was like not at all he's like are you exercising i was like not at all he's like are you sleeping i was like not at all and he's like well you gotta do these things and and i kind of was like i was i was a little bit um back and forth on it because i was like do you not have anything else more esoteric to tell me but also like but but also what the f- f- well, f- fucking shit. Maybe, maybe, maybe doing all those things would solve a lot of my problems. And to tell you, by the way, to tell you, I've done none of those things. I'm still, I'm still very unhealthy. And um, I have more things I want to say about your situation. But first, do you, did you do those things that he told you to do? As much as I can. I've okay. been doing my laundry. My room has probably been the cleanest bin it's been since. I was a child. I go to work every day. I don't be calling off anymore. I don't go to work every morning with, uh, oh, this day is going to fucking suck. I go to work with, uh, well, at least you're getting your job done. I, um, the sleep thing has actually been kind of bad. I've been having a little bit of um, trouble sleeping. And I keep having, not nightmares, but like, I keep having dreams that like I can't help or save my ex. Or that, like, I'm in a really uncomfortable um, situation that has nothing to do with okay, my let life. Me, I want to say, I want to say a few, a few more things to you. Um, first of all, I think, um, and I'm a hypocrite for telling you to do this because I, I haven't done it. But you should listen to your therapist and like, don't. Re- I wouldn't rebuff. Don't rebuff what he's telling you. I'm speaking to myself. Don't rebuff what he's telling you until you've actually done it, because chances are it will make you feel a lot better. And then second thing is like dude, the way you. that you I just I just the way that you told me I don't have anything going for me except for for my girlfriend is like and I've said this a, a bunch of times and I've thought really hard about it is like if the only thing keeping you in business upstairs in your brain is like a a a, a relationship you, you know you're you're fucking yourself man like you got to have things in your in your life that you that are just with that are within you that are making you feel <laughs> confident and happy. And I know that you're just beating the shit out of yourself because you feel guilty about the way that you've been in the past and you but you're bro, like we're 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 young guys, man. You 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 don't th- you have several more decades of life ahead of you. And I hope you realize that. I hope you think about it every day. You have several more decades of life ahead of you in which to work on being the kind of person you want to be. And even though it feels good to just beat the shit out of yourself, you're not going to get there if you keep doing that. So I, I, I understand the natural impulse of beating the shit out of yourself. I, like I, bro, I do it too. But I just hope you understand that you're not going to – that's a it's a it's a bottomless hole. It's a bottomless, unproductive hole to just keep beating the shit. I think there's a lot to be said in thinking deeply about what you've done and 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 the person you've been in the past and analyzing those things in a productive way to make sure that you don't do them in the future. But like, do it do it productively. You know, a- acknowledge the things that you did wrong. Acknowledge the things about yourself that you don't like. And then instead of just gathering it as information to build a case against yourself of how much of a piece of shit you are, gather it as, as information to help you move forward. Because you're only – you're a young guy. You shouldn't just 
throw yourself away like that. And your therapist telling you to alienate yourself from the girl, I don't know. I don't want to tell you what to do or what not to do, but it does kind of sound like for both of your guys' sake, that's not the worst idea. Probably best. Yeah. Um, but don't look, but don't, right. like, but dude, don't look at it like, oh, I've lost the only thing in my life that will ever matter to me ever because I'm such a piece of shit. You you can do so many things. You can do so many things. What do, What is your, what's your job right now? You said you have a high paying job. What's your job? <laughs> you literally talked to somebody who does this before and you hated the phone call. It's I kill bugs for a living, but I promise I don't care about the environment as hard as he does. I don't, I don't, I didn't hate him because he cared about the environment. I hated him, I think, because I was trying to. But you know what I mean? He was, just, he was boring. You kill bugs? As hell. Okay. Do you, what, what do you, outside, what do you want to do with your life, man? Like, what, what, what excites Listen, you? Listen, Lyle, that when I, when I was younger, I wanted to, and it sounds so, you know, post millennial of me, but I wanted to make a clothing brand when I was younger. I also, when I was in high school, I wanted to do computers, but right out of high, that was like, I decided that was like the main thing I wanted to do. And right out of high school, I got all these certifications, but then I fucked off for three years. And then as soon as I went back to try to get back into computers, things change so rapidly that it's like, wow, I have to kind of start from the drawing board. And then on top of that, I've worked in office jobs before, right out of high school, and it's miserable. And like, I, Sounds like everyone else our age, but like, dude, I don't know what to do. I collect Pokemon cards like a fucking child, and I have okay. the coolest collection of Pokemon yeah. cards. That's yeah, a great bro, hobby. I bet, you do. I bet you do. But, but I can't sit here and like do anything with that. I don't know like what I really want, and I think that's hard all on its own. And I promise you, bringing it up on this call, it's not something that I kill myself over in my head every day. But I definitely, okay. like, I feel like I am not lost, but you know what I mean. Just yeah. kind of confused. Yeah. On... Um, what's your name again? Hold on. It says it right here, actually. Pork. Oh, okay, Pork. Pork. Um, hmm. Pork. <sighs> Let me think. I know. I'm a, I'm a hard one. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm happy to be talking about this this right now. Um. Hmm. I would first of all keep seeing the real therapist. Of Second of all, <laughs> don't if it's okay. It's good to analyze the past and learn from it, but don't uh, throw it. Don't weaponize it against yourself on a daily basis. And then, I think that, that that's important. I think out of, and I know you're probably about to say something else, but like, I hear that obviously from a lot of people and I know it sounds very fanboy of me, but Lyle, I listen to you every day at work while I kill bugs and it means a lot to hear that from you. Thank you. I, I just I feel, wish you to know that. I feel it. It's like I'm right there killing the bugs with you and that makes me feel good. <laughs> I had a ton of ants infest my car. Recently, I deserved it. I left a borax. I left leave a plate of borax, sugar, and water on the floor of your car. That sounds and like how leave the bugs it there, there overnight. The <laughs> I know it sounds like how the bugs get there in the first place, but the borax will kill them. Yeah, pork. Um, I, you know, here's the thing. I'm not. I don't. I don't think in the next um, two minutes I'm going to uh, completely rewire your brain to be more optimistic about your yeah. life. But that's what I hope for you. Okay, so um, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the next week just with a smile on my face, and I'm gonna try my hardest not to beat on myself because okay. of this conversation. Okay, okay, good. Try not to be again. Try not to beat on yourself. Try to think about uh, you know, I don't know. You said you want to start a clothing company. You can do so many. This is we're gonna go in circles here, but I just want you to know you could do so many things. Try to do some shit that's not uh, you know get into another relationship that that is beneficial yeah, of to you and try not to you know throw yourself out when you're still in 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 what i believe to be your infancy okay i i got you i appreciate you lyle 
All right. Um, also, are, are you you're wearing a condom when you're having sex with these prostitutes, right? <laughs> yes, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. In fact, okay. when I did, and I'm, I would buy a box and I would always leave it there for whoever else came because I don't want no one to have no CDs. It's very gracious of you. The yeah. All right, Pork. Is there anything Thanks, else you want to wow. say to the people of the computer before we go? I just want to tell the people of the computer to buy your merch and don't take for granted what you have. And, you know, just uh, I haven't read the chat once since we've been on the phone, but please don't be too mean to other people on the phone. Uh, you know what, Pork? Uh, save save the money you would spend on a T-shirt. And continue to go see your real therapist. 100%. I got your back, Lyle. You have a good night. All right, man. You too. Take care. You know, uh, I'm trying to think about what I think about that whole thing. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm always, I'm trying to be fucking optimistic. The whole thing, here's the thing. For that, girl, for that girl's sake, the girl that he was seeing... And I, and I, by the way, I believe him when he said that that girl still has feelings for him because relationships are, they're fucking complicated like that. Um, but it does seem as though, and again, I don't, I'm not trying to tell other people what to do, but it kind of seems as though um, them spending time away from each other would be best for all parties involved. And, uh,. I don't know. I hope he. I hope that Pork finds something um, to do that fulfills him. That's hard. I don't have. I don't have. I don't have answers for a lot of these things, right? Because you're born, and then you can. There's colors and sounds, and then you die, and uh, your gift as a human being is that. Well, some of some of us are lucky enough to have the agency in life to. Uh, decide what we're going to do. And that can be a tough decision to navigate. I don't have the answers for it, but, um, you know, Pokemon cards isn't a bad one. Hello? Hello? Oh, you're doing a bit. No. Yeah, you are. I'm not doing a bit, sir. I just want to talk to you about my business. I want to see if you think it's a good nope, idea, all nope, right? Here's nope, the business. No, no, no. no Elon no, Musk nope. right. has told Five, me that sheep four, and human should three, be able to be able to be two, bred together. One. I want to have a human and sheep hybrid. All right. So right now he's talking to himself. I put him back in the queue. Let's see if he's still. Let's see if. Let's hit the talk button again. Hello? Brother, I haven't left. I need to talk about this business with you, all right? Human all right, and sheep have, hybrids, Steven, all right? Steven, That's Steven, what Steven, we're going to do. Steven, shut up for two seconds. Shut up for two seconds. Uh, can I talk to you? Will you let me talk? I'm waiting, brother. All right. You have, to, you literally, you, you have two options because you're doing a thing. And uh, we could talk. Your options are we could talk with you not doing a bit or we just won't talk. Wh which would you rather do? I would rather talk to you about my business of having human and sheep hybrids. All right. Now, Elon know. Musk is investing in this yes, business. Elon Musk is investing in it, yes. Elon Musk will invest in uh -huh. this business, brother. I'm telling you right okay. now. All right. Now, we've got yeah. women. We've got men. We've got transgender. We've got everything up and down the board. But sure. what we don't have yet is an is animal. And Any human hybrid. Now about. think about how much we would save on food if yeah. we have people just eating wheat and yeah, hay you know and. Yeah. No, I don't care about this anymore. Let's move on. That was a good voice. He could use that voice for something better than that. Thank you.